The New England Patriots have been arguably the worst team in the NFL this season. Sure, you could definitely argue the Giants and Panthers, but the Giants have just been so injured and I might give you the Panthers, but if we're talking the worst team to watch, it might be the Patriots. And you know, this is a team that I thought was gonna be good heading into the season and based off of pure roster talent, I don't know how they're not at least an average team. Well, I mean, I guess we're looking at the reason and why they're not an average team. So today, with the power of Madden, we are gonna try to save the New England Patriots. And we're gonna see if we can try to bring them back to that dynasty level team they once were, or at least a passable NFL team once again. And we did very well with the light goal on the last video. I think we easily hit it within the first day. So again, let's see if we can get to 1,000 likes on this video. And if we do, I might have to rebuild one of the other worst teams in the NFL that I just mentioned so if you want to see that a thousand likes and it'll let me know that y'all want to see it and once we hit 25,000 subscribers which we are pretty close to I have something very very special planned so if you want to see more fun rebuilds from me be sure to subscribe and it'll make you an OG of the channel while you still can be one and no shout out for today's video but let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all might have down below can be a team can be just a chaotic rebuild idea a rebuild challenge just let me know down below because if I pick your comment I'll give you a shout out and all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's get into this rebuild and I guess I'll talk a little bit about the team. I don't want to spend too much time because I want to get to rebuilding this team, but Mac Jones, what happened? I was expecting a big resurgence from him this year because he was legitimately good his rookie year. And I thought last year he just kind of sucked because, you know, they had Matt Patricia, a defensive coordinator who wasn't even very good at that. They had him as their offensive coordinator for some reason. So it was like, okay, you got him out, get an actual offensive coordinator in there, and it should be much better for Mac Jones, but no. He's been one of the worst quarterbacks in the league this season. There is still hope here, maybe, but I don't have much faith that he will regain his old form. I mean, now that I say that, I have a long track record of, <laughs> like, reverse jinxing players, calling them bad, and then they become amazing, so we'll see what happens, but yeah, I don't know. He just isn't doing it this year. The running back group is good with Zeke and Ramondre Stevenson. This receiving core, you know, Kendrick Bourne has been really solid at one point in his career. Devontae Parker's been good at one point. Juju's been really good at one point. They just all look pretty bad this year. <laughs> the tight end group is, it's like good on paper. Hunter Henry's been a top tight end at one point. Mike Gesicki's been arguably a top tight end at one point. Maybe these guys are all just past their prime, but they've all been good not too long ago. The so line is definitely something. I mean, it should be playing a lot better than it is, but it definitely isn't playing great in real life. It is workable here though. I like how it looks here. And then this defense has actually been pretty solid, I'm pretty sure. Obviously, you know, there have been some injuries like unfortunately Christian Gonzalez, I think is done for the year. I know it's at least long-term. Is it for the season? It's probably for the season, which sucks because he was looking really good. The safety group is really good. Jabril Peppers has been a stud this year. This linebacking core is all right. Matt Judon is injured, but <laughs> he's good when he's healthy. They're for some reason giving Anthony Jennings a lot more playing time than Josh Uche. I don't know why the hell they're doing that. Josh Uche is a lot better. We're gonna start him here, obviously. Oh yeah, they also have Jelani Tavai. The Patriots' defensive scheme is complicated in Madden. I mean, it's complicated in real life-ish, but it's laid out weird here. <laughs> and then I loved the Christian Barmore pick. He's been solid this year for sure. Maybe their best D lineman. They also have Keon White, a guy I was lower on as a prospect, but when they took him, I was like, all right, that's not bad. I just did not like the idea of a team taking him in the first round, but that's not where he went. So I was cool with the pick. He's been solid this year. I mean, overall, this team is still pretty good on paper. I There definitely have been a few key injuries, especially on defense, but that's not the main problem of this team. It is this offense. And honestly, call me crazy, but I might do something like this. Try to develop these two younger guys in Demario Douglas and Tyquan Thornton. We might as well. We don't have much else to work with there. But that's enough talking about the team. I've spent a while talking about this team. There's just a lot to talk about here. So let's get to the midseason point of year one and and we'll see how this team does in simulation. I actually don't remember how they usually do year one, so I guess we'll find out. Okay, you know what? We are decent at the midseason point of year one. This is about where I thought this team would be in real life, not two and eight by week 10, or I guess technically week 11 after the Colts game. Like, I thought this team would be solid, and we are all right here. You know what? I will say my custom rosters, okay, maybe this isn't the best advertisement for my custom rosters because we have teams like the 
the Colts at 5-2 and two and the Jets at 0-6. Oh but I was going to say my custom rosters are usually more realistic than the actual game itself. But this is like the worst year I've ever seen for them. The 49ers are 1-6. The Bengals are 2-4. The Lions are 2-5. Okay, ignore what I said. Maybe it doesn't make it more realistic. But we have a decent amount of upgrades here, of course. Mostly defense, which I guess kind of figures. I'm not going to lie, though. I was kind of hoping we would either suck or be good enough to make the playoffs. And I don't think we're going to be either. We're probably going to finish somewhere around 7-10, and 10, which isn't great. That'll be a decently high pick, but I wanted a really high pick, like the Patriots are probably going to have in real life. Also, it might technically be more realistic to start Bailey Zappi, because didn't they bench Mac Jones? I don't know. I don't care. We'll try to develop Mac Jones. I didn't make Mikey McDingle for this rebuild because, I don't know, I just thought Peter Gaffney was kind of funny. But we'll say that Peter Gaffney is deciding to start Mac Jones. How about that? But who are we going to have to resign here? Th did they sign Juju to a one-year deal or was it a multi-year deal? Must have been multi-year. Well, I don't know yet. Yeah, must have been multi-year. That kind of sucks. I was just going to let him go, but I guess he'll be stuck around here. There are a lot of re-signings, though. This is more than I expected. Mike and Wayne will re-sign him four years, 69 mil. Nice. He re-signs. Josh Uche. Sometimes I don't see him do well in this game, but sometimes I do. And he's not crazy expensive. So four years, 44.4 mil. He re-signs. Kyle Duggar, three years, 24 mil. That's cheap. I mean, he's not super interested, so we might as well just go player friendly. And even that's only four years, 38 mil. He re-signs. And then the tight ends, I, I don't know about either of these two. Zeke, I'm good. Trent Brown is usually pretty good in this game. Two years, 30 mil. He re-signs. Sometimes he's awful, but sometimes he's really good. So I guess we'll see which version of him we get. And then it's just a lot of depth. Farrell Brown has looked amazing when he's played, and they should maybe consider starting him, just because, like, what do you have to lose at this point? But hey, I don't know. And then we're gonna have a fifth year for Mac Jones. It might sound crazy, but we could end up picking that up if, you know, he does all right this year. Because it's not very expensive. It's 15 mil for a QB. Like, we'll see how he does, though. But that's all for us to do here, so let's get to the end of year number one, and hopefully we are either good enough to make the playoffs or bad enough to have a really high pick. We will see. All right, well, that was a pretty good prediction. We finished 7 and 10. The playoff teams are definitely interesting. I don't know about some of those, like the Falcons at 13 and 4, but they're always busted in this game. I hate it so much. Let's check out our season stats, though. Mac Jones kind of didn't do too bad. 3,500 yards isn't, like, amazing, but we didn't pass a whole lot. 31 touchdowns is good. 18 pick, definitely not great, but this is better than I thought he would do. Oh, my God. I'm going to make Dak, like, a 40 overall. I'm sick of seeing him win fucking MVP every year. But Mac Jones did about as well as Jalen Hurts. I mean, Jalen Hurts had a better completion percentage, and I'm sure he had a ton of rushing yards, but, I mean, same amount of touchdowns, same amount of picks. I Maybe Mac Jones is the answer here. I don't know. And for rushing, I benched Zeke at the midseason point, just because, honestly, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't remember to start Ramondre Stevenson, but it looks like Zeke did better anyways, so maybe I should have just kept him in there. Our leading receiver was Tyquan Thornton with only 800 yards, 7 touchdowns. Demario Douglas, 800 yards, 10 touchdowns as a rookie. That's not bad. It's probably not going to be enough for Offensive Rookie of the Year. It's probably just going to go to CJ Stroud or something, but we'll see. You never know. The blocking was pretty good. I've seen much, much worse. Juwan Bentley led the team in tackles with 119 tackles for loss, 16 for Judon, 13 for Barmore and Wise, and sacks. Nine for Matt Judon, but outside of him, literally nothing. <laughs> Three and a half for Dietrich Wise and Josh Uche, and that's it, pretty much. And interceptions, two for Duggar, Jonathan Jones, Jelani Tavai, and then one for a few players. There are so many Joneses on this team. I hate it. And there's a weird blank spot MVP. I've never seen that before. That's really weird. Huh, just another bug with this game. That's interesting. Well, we'll say it was Patrick Mahomes because I don't know what that weird spot is for MVP. Jalen Hurts at two, Lamar at three. Lamar might be my pick for MVP this year in real life. He's been really good. I mean, his stats aren't the best, but like, that's why you don't stat watch, bozo. <laughs> but offensive player of the year goes to Patrick Mahomes. Defensive player of the year goes to Khalil Mack. He's He's also way too good in this game. Like, he's solid in real life. I mean, he's still good. He's not defensive player of the year good anymore. It's not 2016 anymore. I hate to break it to you, Madden. But we have Matt Judon up there at number nine. We'll take that. Offensive rookie of the year does go to CJ Stroud. Demario Douglas at number three. We'll take that. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Tyree Wilson. Christian Gonzalez at five. Keon White at seven. Who would I give it to for the AFC? Maybe either Will Anderson or Joey Porter Jr. I'm sure there's someone I'm 
I'm forgetting, but they'll probably give defensive rookie of the year to Jalen Carter because East Coast bias, of course. But of course, that's the end for our season. Let's get into the off season, and it's gonna be an interesting one. We definitely have some needs, but we'll see how much cap space we have. All right, and we have a Super Bowl rematch here. We have the Chiefs once again beating the Eagles in the Super Bowl with a really similar score. Wasn't it 38-35 Chiefs last year? Now it's 38-30 Chiefs. You know, hey, I, I wouldn't say those are necessarily the two best teams in the NFL this year, but I've seen like Falcons Raiders year one, so that's a lot better. Or Pan Panthers Raiders. Panthers Raiders is always my favorite to see. That's a realistic one. But who are we going to have left to re-sign? I can't remember everyone we did. Okay, I think we got everyone we offered a contract for. Should I re-sign one of these two tight ends? I mean, honestly, we might just draft a tight end. They're a little expensive. Each are over 10 mil a year, so I, I don't really want to pay them that. And Mac Jones, here's a lot more expensive now. I wish we could have done that at the midseason, but honestly, nah, we're not going to pick it up. We'll just re-sign him if he does well. Oh yeah, I guess you can't decline it, which is stupid, but whatever. So I guess you just don't sign it, and that's the same as declining it. Whatever, that's fine. So we're just going to let all of these guys hit the market, and let's see who's available in free agency. Hopefully some decent players. Hopefully some good receivers, because we need that. Okay, there is a good receiver in Amari Cooper, but he's not interested. For some reason, I could see him on the Patriots. I don't know why. Maybe that's just because they sign a lot of older receivers. I mean, they got Antonio Brown. They got, I guess, Juju and Devontae Parker aren't really too old, but they're a little bit washed for sure. I mean, they had Brandon Cooks at one time. They never really keep receivers long term, which is interesting. It's, an, it's not the best strategy ever because then you get stuck with the receiving core like they have right now. But let me look through real quick and we will see if there's anything I want to do. But we are going to go for two players in free agency. It's not the biggest class ever, but it is two really interesting ones. We are going to go for Amari Cooper. I don't know if we're going to get him because he's not interested at all, but we do have the lead for him. Sometimes that doesn't mean anything and he might just sign with the commanders. I feel like teams like to sign with the commanders a lot, which is bizarre, <laughs> but we'll see if we can get him because I mean that would solve our wide receiver one issue for probably the entire rebuild. I mean, he might go down to like an 80 four by the end of this, but I mean, he does also have superstar dev, so maybe not. We'll just see. And then Irv Smith, he's been ass for the Bengals in real life this year, but you know, he's a 75 with star here. I have him at like a 71 in my rosters or 72, so he's developed a little bit. It's just a one-year deal too. I don't want to commit to him long-term, but you never know. He has star dev. He can maybe develop. So let's see if we can sign these two players. No, <laughs> no, no Amari Cooper. The Ravens are super interested now. Um, I want a receiver. Or should we just look for one in the draft? I guess we could maybe do that. Because I feel like I signed Gabe Davis way too much. I don't want to just sign him again. Irv Smith, do you want to sign? Oops, I went over there, but apparently he doesn't want to sign. All right, well, underwhelming free agent class, obviously. There were some decent players, though, like Tyron Smith, Chase Young. We just don't really need players like that. Like, I guess we could use Chase Young, but our rush ends are power rushers. And, you know, we have bigger problems than that right now. And Irv Smith does finally sign, so we'll take that. Not the best option, but it's better than nobody there, I guess, arguably. So now let's get to the draft, and I definitely want to look for a receiver. But here in the draft, we don't pick until number 10. I'm kind of surprised by that. I thought we would for sure pick, like, at least, like, 7 or something. But, I mean, 10 isn't too bad, obviously. The Commanders have the number 1 pick here, which, you know, they're not great in real life, but they're not that bad. <laughs> I mean, they almost beat the Seahawks. I hate being a Seahawks fan. But there are... There's one decent QB here in Zach Loud, which is kind of a cool name. I kind of like that. He isn't great, though. He's a first to second round guy, so we'll probably be somewhere around a 73. The question is, do we take him and try to develop him and hope he can become good? Or do we give Mac Jones another shot and maybe try to build around him and then take a receiver in, you know, another season? I guess it depends on what kind of players are here. And Alex Stanford does look pretty damn good. <laughs> I mean, he has some not great stats, like his catch in traffic, release, deep route, but that's usually how playmaker type receivers are. He does look pretty nice. So does Doug Williams. Ooh, yo. He's only the second fastest receiver 
too. Antoine Rose also looks really solid. The F catching and F medium route might hold him back a little bit, but he looks good. Antoine Whitfield, very original name. He looked decent. Okay, I think the top three guys are the best looking receivers in this class. I, I wish we could trade down for two first round picks here. I see the Bears pick back to back right after us. That's not, not really a realistic trade, but I wonder if there's something we can work with here. Let's see. Oh, that's way closer than I thought it would be. Hold on. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm using the NFL trade calculator thing, and this basically says we would be scamming the Bears here, but you know, teams usually got to give up too much value if they want to move up. Honestly, I'm trying to think if this is even worth it because they might just take that QB we want here. QB is their number one need, but I don't know. Justin Fields is probably better than that guy, so we'll do this. We get the next two picks, and do they go with the QB we want? No, they go with Mello Farley. So now, let's go with Zach Loud. QB out of Clemson, only 21 years old, which is nice. He should be developable. Not very quick, unfortunately. Only good throw power, but, you know, it's that's good. Has F injury, but all of his passing stats look really good. Good. If this guy had a little better throw power, I feel like he would be insane. But let's take him here. Hidden Dev, 91 throw power. I thought good would be like 88 or something. That's better than I thought it would be. 75 speed, 84 excel. That's not bad at all. We're in number 19. I don't love that, but I'm a fan of that pick. In what? Okay, I didn't mean to press A, but apparently it tries to do something. That command failed. <laughs> okay. And now with our next pick, which receiver do I think is better? It's hard to say because, you know, Alex Stanford looks good at most things. He doesn't have the best deep route. He doesn't have the best catch in traffic, and he doesn't have the best release. And Doug Williams is faster, but doesn't have the best short route, medium route, catching, release, catch in traffic. I don't know. It's really hard to say who's better. I do usually like to go with playmaker type receivers, but sometimes they do have a tendency to have just normal dev, but he does look insane. He looks crazy. So does Doug Williams, though, low key. I'm Alex Stanford would be the more realistic pick here because with Doug Williams, we already have Tyquan Thornton. It would be redundant a little bit. Let's go with Doug Williams. I don't care. Only 21 years old, out of USC. Sounds good. Fuck. Normal dev. <laughs> All right. Well, apparently good injury rating and good discipline equals normal dev. I, I just don't know how to pick for dev trait. I'm sure that guy was a 90 overall X factor. I'm gonna cry. Hmm. A vertical threat tight end with 477 speed. I'm all right. Thanks. All these tight ends look awful. <laughs> Wyatt Wilson looks decent, actually, but I'm not going to take him yet. Honestly, there isn't anybody here I see that I really want too bad. We might just go with Stan Poole, but I don't even think he's that good. It's just kind of rare to see a decently strong pass blocking lineman, but he is a pass blocker and he only has B pass block. He also has D run block, so I don't know. This guy is a UDFA projected, but he actually looks pretty decent. I might take him later. I want to go with a defensive tackle, but none of them look good. I might just go with Victor Bowens. He doesn't look great, but there's a chance he has a dev trait. I should just stop trying to draft for dev trait because half the time it just backfires completely. Josh Chavez also, uh, I was going to say he looks all right, but those are some not great ratings through there. He is strong though. Is a good scheme fit at 6'4", 270. Yeah, fuck it. Let's, <laughs> I know he's not going to be very good, but oh well, let's take him. Normal dev, damn it. 87 strength, 81 speed. I mean, he is good athletic rate ratings, but that's just tough. But I'll I'll make a few more picks. Maybe I can redeem myself. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, a moment of truth. Let's see how rough the draft was. I don't think I made any good picks late either. Oh, oh, <laughs> this is one of the worst drafts I've ever had. I'll, I'll confidently say that. I'll take the L here. Really? Doug Williams was a 74? Where did the other receiver go though? Oh God. <laughs> oh God. He was a 77 with hidden. What's, what's What's the dev trait? What's the damage here? <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. That that sounds about right. That's cool. That's awesome. All right, well, note to self, go for playmaker receivers. <laughs> Don't go for the deep threats. At least we got, I mean, it was essentially a free pick. I mean, it also kind of wasn't because we had to trade other picks to trade back one spot, but let's think about it like it was a second round pick or something. I That's tough. Maybe we can develop him. Maybe not. That's just, that's just tough all around. And then the rest of these picks weren't great either. The tight end I want got taken, I'm sure 
sure he was better than the guy we got. Was it Matlock? No, it was It was a possession receiver or tight end. Oh, it was Wyatt Wilson. Okay, never mind. The guy we got was better. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Yeah, let's pretend that draft never happened. How about that? All right, and we're going to trade Juju to the Giants for a fourth round pick. I'm sure Juju is the receiver the Giants would want, not an actual, like, you know, really good receiver. I'm sure that's what they would want to do. Definitely. But here's a look at the team heading into year number two of the rebuild. For some reason, Doug Williams got a, a dev trait in the preseason. We'll take it. Uh, what did he get that for? I, I don't know, but <laughs> I won't complain. Must have just had a really good game. I don't know. It happens sometimes, but it's kind of rare. It's interesting. But the team is looking solid for sure, and it's going to be interesting to see how Zach Loud can do as a rookie. I guess number 19 is fine. It's a little weird, but what's a better number? For some reason, seeing a one-digit number on the Patriots makes me think of like a receiver. I don't know. Let's go 15. That works. But hopefully he can develop. You know, Mac Jones wasn't terrible, so if Zach Loud does suck, we could just give up on him and try Mac Jones out again, but I, I don't know. Honestly, even if Zach Loud does suck, I think we'll just stick with him. Also, Kyle Duggar got superstar dev, so that's nice. Jelani Tavai got star dev. It doesn't really say what he got it for, but he got it, so that's nice. But hopefully our team can develop a lot this year. It is a really young team, especially on offense, so let's get to the midseason point and we will see how we are doing. Okay, well, I I figured that was gonna happen. We are 2-5 and five at the midseason point of year two. It seems like whenever we win the first game of the year, it's kind of like a curse. Last year, we lost it and we were like decent at the midseason. This year, we won it and that was one of our two wins so far, so not great. Oh, we, oh, oh, <laughs> we won the first two games and have been on a five-game losing streak. Okay, that's worse. Huh. Well, hopefully we can rebound a little bit, but I don't know what to do about that. That's just tough. We have the second worst defense in the NFL and a mid-offense. You know, the Patriots' defense is always awful in this game, so how about we just cut our losses early? What's usually a good 3-4 defense? I don't even know. The Cardinals sometimes have a good defense, but it's also sometimes kind of shit. Packers, same deal, kind of. I don't know, 4-3 defenses in this game are a lot better than 3-4. The Giants have a pretty good defense right now. We could try that. I mean, those aren't exactly two great teams in real life, Giants and Cardinals, but I mean, we might as well try something different. We are the second worst off or defense in the league. It's kind of weird that, I don't know, maybe we won't go with the Cardinals defense. I forgot they have the Jonathan Gannon system now. I don't know why I forgot that. So I guess we'll try the Giants defense instead. Oh, unfortunately, Zach Loud only has star dev. I mean, I figured, but still kind of unfortunate. I did see his stats for like a split second when I was trying to go to our record and it looked like he was doing well, so that's good. But who are we gonna have to re-sign this year? There's Jabril Peppers, Ramondre Stevenson, Jelani Tavai, Christian Barmore, Mac Jones. There's definitely a decent amount of players here. This is a hard rebuild too. I mean, this would have been better if I didn't absolutely throw that wide receiver pick, but you know, the rest of that draft just didn't look great, at least for positions we remotely needed at all. We definitely have a bright future with this team, so it could be worse, but who do we want to bring back? I do want Jabril Peppers back, four years, 57 mil. We're going to be paying safeties a lot, but that's fine. Restructuring is always a thing, and he comes back. Ramondre Stevenson, though, how is he doing? He has an upgrade here, only 3.7 yards per carry. You know, I think our season is kind of cooked, so we could be sellers here. Let's see if we can make some trade. All right, well, we're going to be getting a third round pick for Ramondre Stevenson. He's a good player in real life for sure, but here he, he isn't great, so we're gonna trade him away. And Mac Jones, you know, it, I would like to keep him around if he didn't need a contract, just in case our guy right now doesn't work out, but I don't wanna be paying Mac Jones to be a backup. So let's see if there's a team that might wanna trade for him. If not, though, we just won't re-sign him. Oh, the Vikings, they, they let Josh Dobbs and Kirk Cousins go, and now they have Teddy Bridgewater and Jameis Winston. Yeah, that's not great. You know what? Let me undo that. Mac Jones was pretty decent last year. Here, I'm saying, not in real life. So I'm going to undo that trade. I feel like we could get a second. Let me redo that. All right, we're giving them their third round pick back, and we are instead going to take a second round pick for Mac Jones. We're basically giving up on the season, like I said, in hopes that we can be a really good team next year. Mm, Matt Judon isn't interested. Well, you know what that means. We're getting rid of everybody. <laughs> All right, this is what I complained about in the last rebuild. The Falcons signed Tyrell Dodson to play 3-4 outside linebacker. That's fun. And we are trading Matt Judon for a third round pick to the Lions. We'll move him down to defensive 
spend, but there is a chance we can just go and sign him again in free agency, so that would work out, but yeah, if he was interested, I would have re-signed him, but I don't want to have to overpay a 32-year-old player, so we're not going to do that. And now for the rest of the guys here, we'll try to bring Jelani Tavai back. That's expensive. Expensive. Uh, is he a trade option here too? No, nah, I don't. He still has a lot of room to grow. We'll offer him, I guess, five years, 71 mil, and he takes it. Okay, cool. That's still expensive, but it is what it is. And then Christian Barmore, two years, 24 mil. He resigns too. Irv Smith, I don't know what to do with him. I don't know if anyone would be that interested in him. And you know, I still want to have a solid tight end option for our young QB. Jonathan Jones, if he takes, oh, he's not very expensive at all. How about one year, 10 mil? We'll see if he takes that and he does and David Andrews we will re-sign at the end of the year because he'll regress Dietrich Wise is also here and he's not interested god there are even more players back here I didn't even notice and we are gonna trade Dietrich Wise to the Falcons for a fourth round pick is it realistic to get rid of so many players at once probably not but I don't know I just I felt like trading I don't know <laughs> it's what I wanted to do okay so now everybody else here will just re-sign at the end of the year or we won't re-sign them at all we'll see I'll refill out the depth chart and we will see how we finish this season okay well in year number two we finish five and twelve Un unlucky season we'll say that we'll hope that's what it was I mean it kind of was we had a good team heading into the season it was a good overall we got beat 41 to 7 by the 5 and 12 Rams that's not great um let's check out our season stats though Zach Loud was okay 3,500 yards 25 touchdowns 10 picks I don't think that's gonna be good enough for offensive rookie of the year and you know what I bet not taking that receiver is gonna haunt us for the entire rebuild because he went to the Bills, right? Yeah, Alex Stanford, 900 yards, seven touchdowns, obviously X Factor. <sighs> he couldn't have gone to like the the Saints or some shit. He had to go to a division rival, whatever. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he was just a bridge guy. He was bad. Receiving Demario Douglas, 900 yards, five touchdowns. Doug Williams, only 783 yards, five touchdowns. So is the number two receiver receiver for this offense the number one receiver I I don't know why why can't the number one receiver in the offense in this game just be the fucking number one receiver it's always different for every offense I think I had Douglas in the slot maybe that's what it is I don't know but well balanced receiving numbers blocking was not great Mike and Wayne did pretty well but city so allowed zero sacks that sounds like a dr. Seuss poem or something but hopefully he can get a dev trait maybe he can win like best o lineman or something i don't know because he's only 72 at 26 years old that's not great but you know hopefully he can develop eventually jelani tavai 144 tackles led the team that's a lot he could go up to superstar dev which would make that contract better tackles for loss 18 for josh uche 14 for christian barmore in sacks eight for uche led the team and not much outside of him maybe the cardinals defense or er, the giants defense isn't the best and then interceptions, two for Duggar, Peppers, and Gonzalez, one for Anthony Jennings. Our defense, or our offense really let us down in the second half of the year. That's kind of what the problem was there. And we didn't really change anything on offense. We traded away defensive guys. We didn't trade away any offensive guys. So I don't know. I don't know what went wrong there. I guess we traded away Mac Jones, but he was the backup QB. But MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes here. Definitely an interesting top five. I guess it kind of makes sense. Offensive player of the year goes to Travis Kelsey. That's kind of different. That's kind of goofy better than seeing the same guy every single year and defensive player of the year apparently the Chiefs were insane this year Chris Jones wins it Josh Uche at number nine offensive rookie of the year Zach Loud at number two <laughs> Doug Williams at number four uh, this is a fun start to this rebuild that's that's awesome I love this defensive rookie of the year goes to Corey McDaniels for the Raiders I'm gonna kill myself <laughs> all right well it looks like our defense did get slightly better throughout the season so we might stick with the Giants defensive playbook for year two the offense, though, it was it was rough still. I mean, no, it wasn't rough still. It was way worse in the second half of the year. We went from a mid offense to almost the worst offense in the league. So we'll have to figure something out there. But let's see what we can do in the offseason. And hopefully we get dev ups. Hopefully we get something because we need something. <laughs> and in the Super Bowl, the Ravens take down the Cowboys 28 to 13. Can we see a different team for once? Can we see like the Jets or something win a Super Bowl? I would prefer it's not a division rival, but like... 
I don't know, can we see the, the Bengals win a Super Bowl, the Lions, the Vikings? I mean, they do. They won Super Bowls in last year's game sometimes. I don't know. I want to see something different. It's always a rotation of the same, like, eight teams. And no upgrade points for players that were on the roster. So apparently we didn't win, like, best alignment or anything. But did we get any dev ups? Really? We didn't get we didn't get one for City So, not allowing a single sack. That's great. We did get Superstar for Jelani Tavai, like I expected. Josh Uche also got Superstar. That's nice. Nice. Our defense is looking good. Our offense is a different story, though. <laughs> I guess as is the case with this team in real life, so we'll just have to figure it out somehow. Amari Cooper would have been nice right about now, though. I won't lie. But for the rest of the players, we're gonna have to re-sign. Cole Strange wasn't great this year. He wasn't terrible, though. I don't know. I just wanna... Oh, that's the fifth year. That's not a re-signing. I'm good. I mean, he's already 27. He's not gonna grow much more. And David Andrews, one year, 12 mil. We'll re-sign him for that. He comes back. He wasn't great, but but he comes back, and I don't think we're gonna bring anybody else back, so we have a good amount of money to work with in free agency, and hopefully we can put it to good use. We are definitely gonna look for a playmaker type receiver in this year's draft, though. We're not gonna mess with the deep threats anymore. Oh, okay, there is some interesting stuff going on here. Let's see what I wanna do. Ooh, dude, Jamal Adams would low-key be so good on the Patriots. We don't really need a safety, though. Emmanuel Ogba, he would have been a good fit for our old scheme, but we don't run that anymore, so it doesn't really make a whole ton of sense to have a 6'4", 278, 3'4", D lineman, even though we do kind of need one. Eric Armstead might be kind of fun. I rarely get him. We might try him on a one-year deal. We'll see. But these are the players we are going to go for to start out, at least, in free agency. It's going to be Nick Chubb, which is the big one. I just don't have a good feeling about this for some reason. I don't know if we're going to... I don't know if we're going to get him, but, you know, obviously I hope so. He's one of the best running backs in this game, maybe the best running back in real life. I would say he is the best pure runner. Christian McCaffrey is probably better overall because, you know, receiving is valuable. But as a pure runner, Nick Chubb is crazy. And hopefully, you know, he can come back fully healthy because his injury was awful. But we are going to say that he does here and we'll try to sign him. Khalil Mack, Defensive Player of the Year last year. We're going to try to sign him. You know, like I said, he's always broken in this game. So hopefully he can be good for us. But knowing my luck, he's going to get like six sacks or something. We're also going to go for Landon Dickerson. He's kind of expensive. I mean, 15 mil per year for like a good guard, not even like an amazing guard or anything is kind of pricey, but he's good for sure. He might get something like that in real life. And Eric Armstead, like I said, we're going to try to go for him too. We would play him at defensive end, I guess. That would make sense. He's 6'7", 290. We wouldn't really want him at nose or anything. So let's see if we can sign any of these players. Okay, we get Nick Chubb and Landon Dickerson. We still have the lead for Khalil. Mack and Eric Armstead. I hope Khalil Mack signs though. It's kind of concerning when you have green interest for a player and they don't sign. It usually means like they won't sign, but we'll see. Okay, Khalil Mack does sign. So those are the big three. If we get Eric Armstead, cool. If not, that can definitely be something we look to in the draft. So it's not the end of the world, but let's see if he does sign. He still doesn't. Okay, I don't know if he's gonna. We'll sim a week and see if he does, but if he doesn't, that's fine and we'll get to the draft. But this is a nice free agent class dude. That fixes like all of our problems except our receiving core. There was DeAndre Hopkins, but you know, he'll be here for one year and then he'll regress to the point where he won't even really be good anymore. So, or he'll just retire. I don't know. But we do also get Eric Armstead. So this was a nice free agent class. And now let's get to the draft and hopefully we can finally find a great receiver. We had an opportunity last year. I blew it. I'll admit that, but we'll see what we can do this year. And here we're going to be trading Cole Strange for a a third round pick. Apparently my thing is just third round picks. That's probably too much for Cole Strange now that I think about it, but oh well, the Bears desperately need a guard and he's like, okay here. He's serviceable, so yeah, third round pick definitely might be too much, but oh well, get get scammed, idiots. I, I've scammed them twice in this rebuild. I feel bad for it. Yo, isn't this guy like MMG's ex's new boyfriend? Am I, cr am I crazy? Isn't that a thing? Like, I think I saw an Instagram post about that and then I like went to his Instagram and I was like, oh yeah, that's MMG's ex. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know. I feel like that's weird for me to talk about, but like, I don't know. I just saw him and I was like, oh yeah, Bryce Berenger. If, apparently she has a thing for kickers and punters, which you know what? Can't blame her. But here in the draft, we have the number five pick, which is definitely nice. The Buccaneers have the number one pick, which checking their roster, it did definitely make sense. That team fell apart here, but there weren't, of course, when we're actually in a position where I scouted receivers 
Raiders. It didn't look like there were any crazy ones. Oh no, a top five talent, deep threat receiver. Oh no, he's gonna have normal dev, isn't he? I mean, this dude looks about as good as the guy I took last year, but apparently this guy's better for some reason, even though the other guy was faster and had better like run after catch ability. What did I do wrong with the last receiver I took? Like <laughs> this dude looks worse, but he is a top five talent. What? This shit's stupid, dude. I don't know what to do about that. Do I even take him? He's gonna have normal dev. I shouldn't take him. In fact, maybe I should go with Roy Springs, who is a deep threat receiver, or a playmaker receiver. He's technically a worse overall, but he'll probably have a better dev trait. This game just hates me. That's my, that's my conclusion. Maybe it's because I talk so much shit on it. I don't know. That's probably why. I mean, the game hears me, obviously. All right, let's go with, let's trade down a little bit. I want to get a little bit of value because he's not supposed to go until the late first anyways. I don't know if any of these picks are going to be good at all. Probably not. Or any of these trade offers, I should say. Yeah, all the way down to 14 for only a four, a six, and a seven. I mean, we could make up for our sins of scamming the bears and get scammed by the Colts a little bit here, but I don't want to do that. Who has pick number 10? The Vikings. We'll see if, we'll see if we can trade down with them. They don't have a second round pick though. Maybe a second next year. Is the NFL pick calculator accurate? Cause this doesn't feel like crazy to me, but it says this is more value. And I, it says this is 1900 value. This is 1700. I, I don't know. We'll do it. It's about fair. Teams that trade up usually have to give up more anyways, so that worked. And now I guess we'll take the receiver, Brian Pollard. I know he's going to have normal dev, but hopefully he is a really good overall. That's really all I can hope. Even though, hey, if you didn't tell me he was a top five talent, I might not even take him. He doesn't look that great, especially compared to the last guy we took. I don't see what's better about this guy at all. Maybe the release is better or something. And maybe the spec catch, maybe. I don't know. But hey, he's apparently good. So let's take him. Okay. He has hidden. I don't know how to draft receivers in this game. I just don't. I need to accept it. I should just let the CPU pick receivers or I should just flip a coin. I'm probably like the only one who doesn't understand how to find a good receiver, but the last guy I took genuinely looked better than this guy, but this guy's better. So whatever, we'll take it. Hidden dev. It's probably star, but it's better than normal. And we do need a tight end too. We're just going weapons again in this draft. Ooh, I have no idea if this guy's good or terrible. I wish I scouted tight ends though. <laughs> I mean, he looked the best option. I don't know if he's necessarily good though. Aiden Parker looks maybe okay, mostly just because of the awareness. All right, we'll just go with RJ Gray. He doesn't look great to me, but he does have elite jumping, change of direction and acceleration, great speed and agility. Not very strong, but some of his receiving ratings look good. I mean, he potentially has like a ton of A's if like the medium route, catching traffic, all that is an A, but I just don't know. We might as well take a chance though. Let's take him. Hidden Dev, 84 speed, 91 Excel, 86 jumping for a tight end. This dude, he looks really good. We'll take that. I don't think he's going to be a crazy overall, but I'm just happy we're getting dev traits now, man. And now I think this is the pick we got from the Vikings for Mac Jones. This will be the last pick I show, probably. What do we want to do here? We could go with a D lineman. Marvin Ray looks good, but I'm always disappointed by D lineman overalls. Ooh, Desmond Rivers. Ooh. Uh, another position I sometimes can't tell is defensive tackle because I was like, oh, a finesse moves for a run stopping defensive tackle. That's crazy. Elite speed and acceleration, 38 bench reps. That's crazy. And then I look and he has C awareness, C block shed, C to F pursuit, B to D play rec. So is, is this guy good or not? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I have no idea. We might as well just take a chance though. I mean, he could be really good. He could be whatever. I don't think he's going to be terrible though. Now that I say that he's going to be a 64 overall, but whatever, let's take him. Desmond Rivers sounds like Desmond Ritter, which isn't great. Out of Oregon State, only 21 years old. Sounds good. Hidden Dev, 90 strength, 81 speed for a defensive tackle at 297 pounds, 85 excel. This dude, he could be crazy. We'll see. I don't think he is going to be crazy because he was kind of weak at some ratings, but you never know. But I'll make a couple more picks and then I'll simulate the rest of this out and hopefully we got some good players. We, we will see. But here's how we did in the draft and, you know, I guess it wasn't great, but it was a lot better than last year. It was actually pretty good though. I mean, anytime you get a top five player in the class, it's a pretty good draft. Brian Pollard is the fourth best player in the class, so that's nice. There was a really good QB though, Jalen Medlock. Usually the really high overall QBs don't have a dev trait, but maybe he's the exception. Okay, that's all I need to say. He has X Factor. <laughs> but I think we did also get 
the best tight end in the class out of 75. Yeah, RJ Gray is the best tight end here, so that's cool. This was definitely a much better draft. This was a good draft for sure. Desmond Rivers is unfortunately only a 71 overall. I took every pick down to Aiden Parker was my last pick. Some of these definitely weren't great, like Parker, like Woodyard, but Nathan Cook is pretty good. No dev trait, but he is a 71 overall. And then Justice Benson. The CPU took him out of Washington State. Let's go. I feel like there are so many Washington State players in the drafts. I'll take it. I won't complain, but it's interesting. Can't say they're a great team, but he looks really good out of 75 with hidden. Is a scheme fit as a power back? I would maybe prefer like a really good receiving back because, you know, he's a little redundant with Nick Chubb, but hey, it is what it is. He'll be a good backup to him. But we're looking a lot better, and let's get into year three of the rebuild. I still don't know how that receiver there that we just took is so much better than the guy we took last year. I don't understand. But here is a look at the team heading into year three of the rebuild. We've done a ton of trading in this rebuild, but we've done it mostly realistically. My <laughs> my realistic rebuilds are never like 100% realistic, but I keep, them, I keep them mostly realistic. I've just done a lot more trading in this one than I usually do, but we are up to an 84 overall now. This team is good. Our one problem on offense, well, I guess we technically have a couple, is maybe QB, but receiver is still kind of a problem. Hopefully Pollard can develop. He probably just has star dev. I mean, he didn't he didn't get a ton of XP through the preseason. He didn't get much playing time, to be fair, but if he had a better dev trait than star, he probably would have gotten an overall, but you never know, I guess. And hopefully Nick Chubb can, you know, make this offense better, because for some reason, running back is like the most important thing in Madden, so we'll see what happens there, and then our defense is even better than our offense at an 85 overall compared to our offense is 84. Lots of dev traits here now. It's looking really good in general. I'm I'm kind of surprised Christian Gonzalez doesn't have superstar in this game. I mean, hell, even when I made my draft classes last year, I gave him superstar. You know, I thought he would be a really good corner in the league, and he was before he got injured. I just feel like Madden gives dev traits to weird players sometimes too. <laughs> like Dak had X Factor for a while. And doesn't Debo Samuel have X Factor still? That's questionable. I don't know. There's some interesting ones. But anyways, let's get to the midseason point of year three. I didn't change our offensive playbook, so if we suck, I'll definitely switch it. But we'll see how we're doing at the midseason point. Okay, well, at the midseason point of year three, we are four and three. We are coming off of a loss four, or not four to two. I'm faded. I was reading the Jets record. We're coming off of a loss 31 to 10 against the Commanders in week seven, so that's not great. But as a whole, at least we have a winning record. <laughs> we do have some re-signings to make here, though. Um, I none of these are crazy important, though. Trent Brown is, and maybe David Andrews, but he doesn't really play super well. We also got a lot of uh good, just unsigned free agents like Joshua Palmer, Chuba Hubbard, I guess, Josh Metellus, Christian Benford. We brought Dietrich Wise back, apparently. The Falcons just cut him. I think we traded him to the Falcons. Or they just didn't re-sign him. I don't know. But there isn't really anyone here I'm dying to bring back. I set our focus position as linebacker because I figured Juwan Bentley would be coming up. And I didn't want to have to pay two linebackers, so we just won't. I mean, the Patriots are masters in real life at just finding linebackers because they have such a specific skill set need there. Like, Juwan Bentley wouldn't work for most teams in the NFL because he's just like a pure run defender, not very good in coverage, but he works here. But for our new defensive scheme, we're not even going to target that. We'll just draft a linebacker. But Trent Brown, I do want him back. He's going to regress though, so I'll wait to re-sign him after the season. We're not going to bring anybody here back yet. We will pick up the fifth year for Christian Gonzalez when we can actually do that, but that's all there is for us to do here. So let's get to the end of year number three, and hopefully we can finish. I just have a feeling we're not going to be in the playoffs, but Hopefully we can be. We'll see. Okay, well, I should have just said what I thought we were going to be because I was thinking either 8 and 9 or 9 and 8, but I didn't want to manifest it, so I didn't say it, but maybe I should have. Maybe we wouldn't have. Maybe I wouldn't have manifested it. Maybe we wouldn't have finished 8 and 9. That's just tough. And... This year, we had a top 10 offense, but we had a bottom 10 defense. We had a good run D, but our pass D was number 28 in the league. So that's tough. I was thinking, oh, okay, we finished eight and nine, but that probably just means we need to switch the offensive playbook, which maybe we still do because Zach Loud was not that good. 3,600 yards, 26 touchdowns. That isn't great. And 13 picks isn't great. Hmm, <laughs> this is an interesting rebuild. This is just like the weirdest feeling rebuild I've ever done. I don't know how to explain it. It's 
just a weird one. I can't get like a gauge on how anything's going. Like the first year, I thought our QB was gonna get better in year two, but he looks worse. Nick Chubb did well, 1,700 yards. I wish he had one less yard. 5.6 yards per carry, 17 touchdowns. Yeah, I want a new offense. We, I wanna be more balanced than we are right now. RJ Gray was our leading receiver with 800 yards, four touchdowns. Brian Pollard, 855 yards, eight touchdowns as a rookie. Not bad, but probably as star dev. Yeah, and I don't think he's gonna win offensive rookie of the year with that. I mean, he could, but I don't know. The blocking was all right. Nobody did terrible. Mike and Wainu was very good. Jelani Tavai led the team with 122 tackles. Tackles for loss, 11 for Uche, nine for Mack and Barmore, and then sacks, 14 and a half for Khalil Mack, nine for Josh Uche, four for Keon White, and interceptions, three for Tavai and Peppers, and then one few players. I, I have a hard time seeing what the problem with this defense was. We got pressure. We got a few interceptions at least. We got, I guess, not as many tackles for loss as usual, but our run D wasn't the problem. It was the pass D. Um, I guess our corners didn't do great other than Christian Gonzalez did pretty well, but even he had zero picks. He just had a decent amount of pass deflections. So I think we are going to get rid of Marcus Jones and Jonathan Jones, and we are going to look for two replacements in free agency. Okay, I asked this in the last rebuild, but I didn't see any answers. Was there a catch is allowed stat at one point? I am like 99.9% sure there was. Or no, there definitely was. I, I used to look at it all the time to try to gauge how well the corners did. But corner play in this game is just so inconsistent, as with most things. So I don't know. It's just hard to tell who's actually good in this game. But yeah, we're going to look for two new corners, and hopefully that'll fix that problem. This is just such a weird situation because our problem was the defense, but looking at the stats, I would guess the problem was our offense. So I don't know. <laughs> I've no idea. Oh yeah, I forgot to check out yearly awards. Let me stop that because I don't think you can check yearly awards in the offseason anymore for some reason. But MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. It's always the same top group now. Love that. Also, Tua always goes to the Rams pretty much. Also love that. But offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb at number four. Defensive player of the year goes to Josh Allen. Khalil Mack at number five. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jalen Medlock, the QB. For the Broncos, we get cucked again. We get number two and number three three. Cool. <laughs> and defensive rookie of the year goes to Ronald Johnson for the Jaguars. What a name. And in the Super Bowl, the Rams take down the Bills 28 to 21. On the bright side about our team, we do have 90 mil projected in cap, so that's pretty good. Also, you know what? I'm happy to see that Super Bowl. Those are two different teams. I'd, I don't know how realistic it is that the Rams are there. I mean, they have Sean McVay, one of the better head coaches, but like that roster is disgusting in real life. Maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe they'll fix it, but I don't know, man. It isn't, it isn't great there. In four re-signings, we of course have Christian Gonzalez. We are going to pick up the fifth year for him, obviously. It's not even that much, but we are not going to bring Marcus Jones back. He wasn't very good last year. Jonathan Jones, same deal. We're really going to let almost everyone go here. I do want Trent Brown back. A, <laughs> a three-year deal isn't exactly realistic for a 33-year-old player, unless they're like a superstar player, but here it doesn't matter because we're probably only going to do another year or two but three years 51 mil and he takes it okay cool and David Andrews he hasn't been great his first year was good but the last two haven't been amazing I I guess we'll re-sign him if he takes this one year 11 mil he does take it okay that's not even a bad deal at all and everyone else we will let go so 63 mil to work with and we can restructure if we need more money for some reason so let's see what we can do in free agency well there isn't really anyone in free agency that I'm dying to get necessarily there are some decent corners for sure and there are some decent players in general But like we don't really need some of these guys like they're good linemen Our line is pretty set assuming it actually plays as well as it should. Yeah, it's not the greatest free agent class I thought it would be better, but there is some stuff to work with. We'll see what we can do This is one of the most interesting trades I have ever done. I don't know how realistic this trade is I've never seen something like this happen in real life So I don't have anything to gauge this off of but we are pretty Pretty much trading back 12 spots in the draft to upgrade a receiver from Demario Douglas to T Higgins. I can't even say this is ripping off the Bengals too much because they're still getting a pretty good receiver and they're trading up pretty high to probably take something important and they probably can't afford to pay T Higgins. I guess they probably have at this point, but <laughs> I guess it'll free up more money for them. But there were clearly no good free agents available at receiver. So we got to do what we gotta do, and we are adding T. Higgins. And
And in free agency, we're not going crazy or anything. There is, like I said, there isn't really anyone here that I want too badly, but we're going to get Grady Jarrett, hopefully. I mean, we don't have a crazy offer in for him. I mean, it's expensive. It's like 15 mil, but it's only one year. We'll see if he takes that. And then Razul Douglas and Deron Bland. We'll see if we can get those two. I checked the stats for all the corners that were, you know, towards the top of the list, and they had the best stat line, I guess. But let's see if we can sign any of these players. So both of the corners, Razul Douglas and Deron Bland, do sign with us. Unfortunately, Grady Jarrett doesn't, though. And I don't know if we're going to be able to get him, which kind of sucks because he is pretty good in this game a lot of the time. I guess we'll try just straight up player friendly. And no, he goes to the Bears. You hate to see it. But that'll just give us something to draft. So speaking of that, let's get to the draft and we will see what we can do. Oh, yeah. And before I forgot I was going to do this before we get into the draft super quick, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because as you all know, I got something very, very special planned that I'm sure y'all would really like for when we hit 25k. So if you haven't already and you've made it all the way here, uh, you know, be sure to subscribe and share with a friend you think might enjoy the channel, that too. I'm really trying to grow the channel and I would very much appreciate it. But that's all the plug-in I'll do for now. I would just very much appreciate that. But here in the draft, the Broncos pick at number one, we pick at number 23, of course. And I guess this is kind of a good thing, but we don't really have any needs that we can really fill through the draft anymore. I mean, there are a few, but not many. QB is maybe one of them, and Travis Turner actually looks pretty good. Mark Kinney I focus scouted because he has crazy speed. <laughs> Had an insane combine, but he's just not a good player. He isn't awful, but definitely not a first round guy. We don't need a receiver anymore, although, I mean, maybe one of these playmaker guys are good. I don't know. Our biggest need is probably linebacker, but something interesting about that is we, of course, have Marty Mapu there at a 74 with star, but also this Dylan Paulson guy has superstar dev. The CPU just picked him, I'm guessing, yeah, last year. He's one year of experience. What round did they get him in? Okay, fourth round pick. I was gonna say, if he was like a seventh round pick, that would be a crazy pick, but fourth is good value. So we could just start him and try to develop him, but it might be kind of tough to develop him because, you know, if you have a player like that isn't 21 years old, they don't develop pretty much. There are a couple first to second round guys, though. There is Gerard Coates and Dominic Foote. Dominic Foote has bad pursuit, but A zone, A awareness, ran a 4-5-2 at the combine, pretty good bench press. And Gerard Coates has A awareness, A zone, A power moves. Cool, I guess. I don't know. And he's faster with 4-4-2 speed, 4-3-8 at his pro day, but he's weaker. Only 17 bench reps. So I don't know. Both of them have their flaws, but both of them have their good parts. So I think we are going to go with Jared Coates, though, or Gerard Coates, just because he is faster and then everything else kind of balances out. I think they're going to be really similar overalls. I mean, obviously, they're both first to second round talents, but let's go with Gerard Coates. Are we going to go with Gerard Coates? I might have just lied. We can get him in the second round. We will go with Gerard Coates, but we still kind of need D-line. Ooh, <laughs> the first one I picked might be a really good one. Damn, a lot of these guys look good. Just looking at David Long, he looks pretty good. I don't want to take him though, because I don't want five players named David Long in the league. I mean, he will be in the league, but <laughs> that's too many. Gerald Toon also looks pretty good. He looks kind of similar to Braxton Ward, just slightly worse. All right, yeah, let's go with Braxton Ward. 6'6", 303, 22 years old, left-handed just like me for real, out of Ole Miss. I don't know if he's gonna have a dev trait, I have no idea, but I think he'll be a good overall, so let's take him. Hidden dev, 94 strength. I love to see that. We'll have to move one of our defensive tackles to defensive end, either him or Christian Barmore. I guess we'll see which one goes down the least. I think we have back-to-back -back picks, right? Yeah, 10 and 11. That's interesting. But let's go with Gerard Coates here out of Miami. Another hidden dev, 90 speed, 91 excel, very fast, obviously. I kind of thought he could even be a little faster. I mean, he averages out at like 4-4 four, four flat speed, but I definitely won't complain about that. And the one QB I was thinking about is gone. Mark Kinney's still here. He doesn't look that good, though, so I don't think I'm going to take him. If he is available in the third round, though, I might as well. Maybe he has a crazy dev trait. You never know. Our QB hasn't played very well, so we might as well take that chance if he is still available. Ooh, Avery Matthews low-key looks really good. I have no idea if physical receivers are ever good. Half the time when I take them, I feel just betrayed and lied to, but 
This guy looks crazy. But there is a playmaker guy. We don't even need receiver anyways. Who cares? That was a quick change up, but like we, we don't need receiver. We do maybe need right guard because City So isn't the greatest overall in the world. So I guess we'll go with Cade Fox. He's not a scheme fit though. I'm so indecisive. I don't know why. It doesn't even really matter. These are going to be backups anyways, more than likely. Let's go with Cade Fox out of Notre Dame. This is the last pick I'll show. Hidden Dev, 89 strength, 80 jumping, 83 excel. Crazy ratings for a line. I guess linemen always have good acceleration, but it's always a little jarring to see. But anyways, I might make a couple more picks, but I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well, here is how we did in the draft. We did pretty well. Braxton Ward, our first pick is a 76 overall. That's about what I expected. I was, I was thinking he could maybe be worse because I feel like, you know, a lot of the time I'm just disappointed by players overalls. But no, Braxton Ward does look good. I'm happy with that pick. Gerard Coates, 74 overall as a rookie we'll take that that's about what I figured I want to see I guess I won't know what Coates's dev trade is but I am curious about the other middle linebacker that was there it was Dominic Foote he's also a 74 with normal so we got the better guy I mean either way they were the same overall so we just happened to pick the one with the dev trait we'll take it there was an 82 overall pass rusher in this draft good lord Reggie Bayer with X factor okay that's insane also DJ Martin an 80 81 overall tight end. Tight ends, if they're like a good overall, they have a low dev trait a lot of the time, but nope, they're just all X factors in this rebuild. All right, cool. <laughs> but anyways, the rest of our draft was pretty good too. Cade Fox is only a 72. I thought he would be a little better. I took every pick down to Nelson Underwood was my last pick. Also, is it a strat to like go to the bottom of like each position and take some of the players there? Like the very bottom, like the bottom two? Because both of the bottom two middle linebackers looked pretty good. We went with Nelson Underwood. He was one of the two, and he's a 69 with Hidden Dev. Nice. I don't know if I would be able to find the other one. I don't remember his name for sure. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It might have been Aaron White, but he's not good, so I don't know. He looked a lot better than a 64. I don't know. It's interesting. I might check that out sometime in a different draft class, but we definitely had a pretty good draft, and let's get into year number four of the rebuild, and hopefully we can finally make the playoffs with this team. We have a good enough roster, but will EA allow us to. We'll see. But here's a look at the team heading into year four of the rebuild. We're up to an 86. We're looking very nice. It's just, can the team actually perform? I guess we'll see. I did switch to the Chiefs offense and I switched to the Rams defense. They had a really good defense last year and our defense wasn't exactly really good. So we'll try something different again. As y'all know, I hate how playbook dependent this game is, but if you don't have a good playbook, you won't do good or at least nearly as well as you should but we'll have to see what Zach Loud can do especially in the new offense we'll see he's still only 23 years old it's just he hasn't been great so far but hopefully this will be his year we'll see and hopefully T Higgins will help him out and then on defense I was gonna say a, not a whole lot has changed here but we did add Braxton Ward we added Gerard Coates Razul Douglas Deron Bland like we definitely made some additions but at its core it's still a really similar defense just hopefully it can perform better better now that we got better performing players, but you never know. <laughs> so now let's get to the mid-season point of year three and, or no, year four. Did I say year three earlier? I don't know. It's year four and hopefully we can finally do well. We deserve it. We have a good team. Okay. Well, at the mid-season point of year four, we are once again four and three. Will we ever escape mid? I don't know. We actually have, hold on. We have the best scoring offense in the NFL with 28.4 points per game. Our offense is doing very well and our defense is doing pretty well. We again have a bad pass D so that stays the same even though we switched playbooks and you know it should be a really good pass D but apparently not. But overall our defense is doing pretty well it looks like. So that's good. I can't wait to finish with a mid offense and a really good defense and miss the playoffs at 9 and 8. It's gonna be great. But we have a decent amount of upgrades here of course. That'll always help. Maybe that'll keep us from you know regressing in the second half of the year. We'll see. I guess I'll turn on auto upgrade. I usually like to just spend upgrades myself, but I don't know, maybe that'll make us play better. The slight upgrades we'll get throughout the year. I just like to have it off because I like to go slow.
slot for corners to try and get them a lot of man coverage, but we'll see if that helps. And we, of course, have some re-signings here. Are there any important ones this year? Okay, there's Landon Dickerson, Christian Barmore, Keon White, Marty Mapu, Khalil Mack, David Andrews, Bryce Berenger. There are a decent amount of starters, but I'm not necessarily dying to get any of these players back, except maybe Khalil Mack, because he is really good in this game. How has Landon Dickerson been doing? Pretty solid last year, pretty solid this year. He's doing pretty solid. <laughs> we'll re-sign him two years, fifth or 31 mil, 15 per. Christian Barmore will re-sign too. He's not very expensive. Two years, 18.8 .8 mil. He re-signs. Keon White is like, meh. He hasn't really done a whole lot in this rebuild. We'll let him walk. We might be able to find an upgrade there too, so we'll see. And then Mac will re-sign at the end of the year after he regresses. He might even retire, which I hope not. That'll make our last year hard, but we'll see. And David Andrews will also re-sign at the end of the year. I guess we'll re-sign Chad Ryland, even though he's been really bad in real life. And Bryce Berenger isn't interested, and he's not great. So, I mean, he's doing all right in real life, but here he's only a 75, so we'll look to upgrade there. But we also have the fifth year for Zach Loud and Doug Williams. Doug Williams, probably not, but we'll have to decide. Ooh, that is expensive. I guess it won't even matter anyways, because that would be in year six, and next year is probably going to be the last year of the rebuild. So that doesn't really matter anyways. But now let's get to the end of year number four. I almost forgot what year it was again. And hopefully we can finally make the playoffs, dude. I We deserve it, man. We'll see, though. Probably not is my guess, but hopefully. All right, I know this game too well. It's kind of scary, but before I reveal <laughs> how we did in year number four, if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like. It really helps out the channel. It really helps out the video. It helps push it to more people. And of course, if we hit 1,000 likes, I will do another one of these, I guess, bad team realistic rebuilds or whatever you suggest down below. So be sure to go down below and like any good suggestions you see because I'll probably do like the most liked one or one of the most liked ones that I think would be good. Just be sure to do it. It sounds like a lot, but it takes you like 10 seconds, <laughs> if that. And of course, subscribe if you want the uh, the chaotic rebuild that I've been plugging for like two weeks now to happen. <laughs> Plus, you'll get more of my banger rebuilds suggested to you. But this is how the team is looking at the end of year number two. Year number two? What the fuck? Year number four? I just say things sometimes. I don't even think I just speak. I'm just silly and goofy like that. What can I say? <laughs> but in year number four, I was correct. We finished nine and eight, but we did somehow make the playoffs at only nine and eight. I love how the Bills were 13 and four with an 85 overall team while we were an 87 and only went nine and eight. I despise this game. And guess what? Our offense regressed like I expected and our defense got better through the second half of the year. I just know this game too well. What can I say? <laughs> now, we didn't necessarily finish with a good defense like I predicted, and we didn't finish with a mid offense, but they headed in that direction for sure. I guess we'll check out our season stats, though. I'm going to be disappointed, I know, but oh, okay. I thought the problem was going to be Zach Loud, but he was insane. 4,300 yards, almost 40 touchdowns, and only four interceptions. His completion percentage wasn't great, but who cares? He was insane other than that. Nick Chubb, 1,300 yards, 5.2 per carry, 16 touchdowns. T. Higgins with 1,000 yards, 14 touchdowns. R.J. Gray with 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Even Brian Pollard had 900 yards. Finally, good receiving numbers. It's refreshing. We probably allowed a lot of sack. Yeah, Trent Brown was awful, but other than him, the line held up really well, especially Landon Dickerson. He didn't allow a sack in the second half of the year, but we might replace Trent Brown. We'll see. And then on defense, 148 tackles for Jelani. Tavai led the team. Tackles for loss, 19 from Mack, 18 from Ward, 17 from Uche. And sacks, 14 for Khalil Mack, 13 and a half for Josh Uche, 10 for Christian Barmore. You know what? Our defense as a whole didn't do great, but those are pretty good numbers. I might slightly suggest the Rams if you do have to use a 3-4, but just use a goddamn 4-3. 4 threes are always better in this game. And then interceptions, two for Tavai, Bland, and Duggar, and then one for Coates, Douglas, and Peppers. I do actually want to check who was the best defense and offense in the league this year. So the best offense was the Bengals. That never works when I use their playbook. Damn, the Chiefs weren't even up here. They were about mid. They were a little better than mid, but close. And then the Cowboys allowed the least amount of yards. How about for a 3-4 defense? The Jags, but it looks like they allowed a ton of points. The Rams, and they also allowed the least amount of points. So the Rams are low-key looking like one of the better 3-4 defensive playbooks. Low-key. But but I don't know though, because we didn't have that good of a defense. They did though. But let's check out yearly awards. I'm yapping too much, I know. Lamar wins 
wins MVP, that's interesting. And Zach Loud was at number four. I'm surprised he wasn't higher. I mean, I thought he would be top three. I guess four is close, but 39 touchdowns, four interceptions, and like 4,300 yards or whatever he had isn't top three. I'm scared to see what these guys did then. Of course, Mac Jones on the Vikings would be up there, but hey, we upgraded, so who cares? Offensive player of the year goes to Josh Jacobs. Nick Chubb at number five. Of course, Alex Stanford is up there. Zach Loud at number nine. Defensive player of the year goes to Miles Garrett. Khalil Mack at two. I wish we could have won that, but it doesn't really matter. It's not like Mack's going to develop much anymore. Josh Uche at number four. Jelani Tavai at five. I mean, with how with how Khalil Mack's been playing, he should be like a 93 or something, but you just can't develop old players. I hate it. And Philip Saunders for the Texans wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. I didn't see any Patriots. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to David Long, someone I was thinking about taking. I don't know if he would have done that if we t if we drafted him, but still always great to see. <laughs> Love that. Jared Coates at number five. Braxton Ward at seven. Again, not great with the awards. I mean, we had players up there, but I don't think we've won a single award throughout this rebuild. I mean, maybe one of the positional ones, but not one of the big ones. But anyways, now in the playoffs, we are going to be taking on the Bills and probably losing to them in the wild card. We have a one last hurrah. This is probably for Khalil Mack, unfortunately. I don't know who else it could be for, unless it's like Trent Brown or something, or David Andrews, maybe. Okay, it is David Andrews. Plus 10 morale for all players. We'll take that. I mean, David Andrews hasn't been that great here, honestly. And we have a first of many. We finally made the playoffs. <laughs> Took us till year four, but we finally made the playoffs. And I don't know if this team is just cursed in this game. I didn't mean to pick guarantee win. Oh, that's risky. We just gave them plus five break tackle and hit power. That's great. But yeah, I don't know if the Patriots are just cursed in this game or what, because we have an offensive playbook that does well. We have a defensive playbook that looks like it does well, and we have a good roster, but we're just not doing great yet. And we do have a few upgrades here. Is is Nelson Underwood the guy I took in the seventh round? Because he's developed a lot for a backup. Does he have a really good dev trait? It says he's played zero snaps, so he must. What is it? No, it's just star. I don't know. He must just be one of the focus practice players. I don't know. I've never messed with practicing. I think that's just a thing. But let's simulate this game against the Bills out and inevitably lose. I can't wait. Okay, no, just kidding. We technically upset them 24 to 21, but we are the better team. We have a much better roster. I mean, it's not much better, but it's two overall better, and we were like five games worse, or four games worse, so I don't know. And now we are going to be taking on a team that we are five games worse than, but four overall better than in the Cincinnati Bengals. Isn't that always just fun? <sighs> but we have a recap for the one last hurrah, and you know, it could be good that we went guarantee win now that we won the game. It could be like a lot of XP. I've never like picked that, but this will give us plus 10 more morale for all players. And we have a recap for the first of many. So what does this give us? Just plus 10 staff points? <laughs> How is that worth it? It gives you three extra for like juicing their entire defense. Yeah, um, or their entire team, I think it did. Because I think it gave plus 10 block shed or no, plus five block shed and plus five break tackle or something. I don't know. That ain't worth it. I'm never doing that again. I mean, it was an accident, but still. But we have a hot opponent scenario here for the Bengals. Shout out Bobby Schmurda. But we will go be confident. Y'all know me. We're not doing the whole risky thing again. We're not going insult opponent. I mean, that does give them plus 10 to like all their stats, but it also gives us plus 10 to all those stats. And we have some upgrades before we simulate this game. Josh Chavez and Damian Meadows. I don't even know who Damian Meadows is, but let's simulate this game and probably lose lose again. I mean, we didn't lose the last one, but yeah, 21 to 14 is the score and we lose. So that's always fun to lose to a team four overall worse than us. That's cool. I'm in pain. And in the Super Bowl, the Rams beat the Raiders 24 to 21. Yeah, those are two great teams in real life this year. I mean, maybe in the future, but that's, that's something. Ooh, ooh, Jelani Tavai has X factor now. I'm guessing he led the league in tackles or something because yeah, he had 148, I think. So that's pretty massive. We'll take that. I wonder if we did hit any other dev ups though. We might have gotten one for the tight end. I would hope we got one for our QB. Maybe T Higgins even, but he didn't have like a crazy year, I don't think. He just had a good year. It looks like Trent Brown and David Edwards retired though because we do have a D for left tackle and center. But that's fine. Those are like our two worst performing linemen. Or no, Trent Brown did didn't retire. Why did we have a D there? I don't know. But T Higgins did get X factor. I'm kind of surprised he wasn't that crazy, but we'll take it. Zach Loud got superstar. I wish he got some XP though. And then RJ Gray also got superstar. And on defense, no dev ups other than obviously Jelani Tavai. Also Colts only, or Coates only has star and Ward only has star. 
Hard. So that's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. We've been really unlucky with the dev traits. We haven't hit one better than Star other than Paulson, who's a backup, and that's it. Like, that's really unlucky. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that happen through four years of drafting, or I guess three technically. That's just a skill issue, I guess. I don't know. Maybe there's something I can do about that, but I don't know what. But let's get into the off season. I don't know how much more we can upgrade this team. I mean, we definitely need a left tackle and a center, maybe a receiver too, if we can find one in free agency. And other than that, I mean, just we'll spend the money we have on whatever we can and draft whatever we can. But the team's already good. It's just about the team actually playing as well as it should. But we have 69 mil to work with. Nice. And who do I want back? Um, I, I guess we'll pick up the fifth year for Zach Loud. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to get to that point, but I guess we'll do it. We'll re-sign Khalil Mack, obviously, one year at 12 mil. He comes back. And everyone else is just a backup, so we'll let all of them go. I guess technically Keon White is a starter, but three fours in this game are a little wonky. He doesn't get used like hardly ever, so it doesn't really matter. What did I just click? Oh, I, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> but in free agency, there are definitely some players, I will say that. I, there aren't many good ones, but there are a few good ones, I guess. Ronnie Stanley, I never know if I can trust him or not. Sometimes he's good, and then sometimes he's really bad. Like, for the Ravens, he was good, but they're very run-heavy. Like, I don't know how he would do going from, like, the least pass-heavy offense to now probably the most pass-heavy pass -heavy offense in the Chiefs' offensive playbook. I guess that's what Orlando Brown did, but he also switched from right tackle to left tackle. But I guess we'll take a chance on Ronnie Stanley. We'll see what happens. And you know, if you think about it, I guess we could maybe move Trent Brown to left guard. I mean, he's 6'8", so I don't know about that, but he does have good power, and then we could move Landon Dickerson to center. I guess that kind of solves that. I don't know how well those players will play at new positions, but I guess we could maybe try that. Ooh, Joey Porter's here. 14 pass deflections? Ooh. Okay, let me, let me see how our corners did. I never really get super in detail like this, but when we've had a struggling secondary, I definitely want to check. Okay, yeah. I mean, Deron Bland did pretty well. We could maybe replace R Razul Douglas, I guess. Christian Gonzalez was the worst performing out of all of them. Zero picks, five pass deflections. At least Razul Douglas got one pick. Also, Duggar and Peppers haven't been very good in coverage. Should we maybe look for a more typical free safety than Jabril Peppers? Because in coverage, it doesn't look like he's doing super well. I mean, that's maybe what we could do with Razul Douglas. He would work at safety. All right, and here we are going to be trading Jabril Peppers back to the Giants for a second round pick. So that's maybe a lot of value for Jabril Peppers, but I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything with that pick anyways. You know, I like Jabril Peppers in real life, but here he just isn't performing super well, to say the least. <laughs> also, Marquise Bell, holy shit, 18 pass deflections. Look at this stat line, 129 tackles. I mean, the picks aren't great. It's only one, but still, that's an interesting stat line. I've become very obsessed with pass deflections in this rebuild for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I guess just because we don't have many of them. And here we are going to be trading, I think, our original second round pick. So I guess we're slightly trading up to slightly downgrade an overall at safety, but it should hopefully be better play at safety. We're trading that second and Morris, a backup tackle for CJ Gardner-Johnson, who had like the most pass deflections for a safety in the league other than I think Alohi Gilman had one more but in the NFC he had the most oh I was like where is he oh yeah we're not in the or he's not in the NFC anymore but yeah Alohi Gilman had 11 and CJ Gardner Johnson had nine that's a bad number combination but oh well it just be like that sometimes but now we still have free agency to worry about and we are going to be offering for Ronnie Stanley Christian Wilkins Joey Porter Jr. and Deron Payne hopefully we can get Get all of these guys, but I guess we will have to see. So let's see if any of these guys do want to sign. They all sign, and who do we get? Okay, we get Ronnie Stanley, we get Christian Wilkins, and we get Deron Payne, but we don't get Joey Porter Jr. That kind of sucks. I would prefer if we just got Wilkins and Porter instead of Wilkins and Payne, but whatever. Now I'm in pain. It looks like Jeremy Chin's been doing pretty well. Good amount of pass deflections every year. He's consistent. I'm sure he'll have two for us, but I guess we can go for him, maybe. Maybe. I mean, we have money left over, so we might as well go for somebody. So let's see if he wants to sign, and he does. Okay, cool. This was a good free agency, a lot better than I thought we would do. We're up to an 88 overall even before we move players around, like our offensive lines. So we're looking good, and now let's get to the draft.
Oh, um, <laughs> might I remind you all, this is a multi-billion dollar company. Um, you know, I've seen this happen to people before, and I know there is no way to get these back, so I guess that's the end of today's rebuild. <laughs> God, this game fucking sucks. So here's what happened. It's a new day from the last clip I recorded, and I was going to launch the game, but it said it needed an update, so I was like, okay, let's run the update. But the update started, like, the progress bar was already, like, 70 75% ish full and it was just saying like finishing up or something or like finalizing I don't know what it said and then it would just close and then say update and then I would press update and it would just say finalizing and then it would close and then I would press update and then it would say finalizing and then it would close so it was like all right what the fuck is the problem so I went to like some post that said turn your EA app to offline mode and launch the game and then when you have the game open turn the game back to online mode and it should should fix it and it did it let me get through it it stopped trying to update but now I have this now my franchise is gone so <laughs> not sure what to do about that I wanted to do at least another year but let me see if there's anything I can figure out but if not that might be the end of today's rebuild because the NFL for some reason still lets EA run a football game for some fucking reason with like doesn't the game have like a one star review isn't that what it is yeah it's a 1.6 that's that's great. Is the NFL just unaware of how bad this game is? They have to be. I don't know. Okay, yeah, I tried to figure it out. I couldn't. That's just, <laughs> that's tough. Do any of mine work? Oh, of course the last one works, the Raiders one, but not the one I'm working on. <laughs> that's fun. But I guess that's gonna be it for today's video. Nothing I can do about that. I mean, that's just a garbage company being a garbage company. What can I say? But I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Again, if you did, <laughs> be sure to subscribe for more. Normally this doesn't happen. This has never happened before. If you know a fix for this, I mean, it's too late for this one, but maybe if this happens in the future, let me know down below, just in case this does happen again. I mean, it's never happened, but maybe it'll be a new thing. You never know. And be sure to like if you enjoyed today's video. Again, a thousand likes, and I will do another one of the worst teams, or any fun rebuild ideas y'all have, whatever type you want to see. But thank you all so much for watching, and with that, I'll see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.